Hey. So, this video is kind of just like my opinion, man. This video is not scripted. <clears throat> uh, this video uh, is just me kind of talking off the cuff. If you don't want to listen to my opinion, I totally understand. There are other videos that you can watch. Uh, but if you do want to stay and you do want to hear what I have to say, uh, thank you. And you can always leave a comment below. Maybe I will reply. Uh, with that being said, with that being said, I wanted to talk about YouTube Vance's recent departure. Um, now, YouTube Vanced was a modification of the actual YouTube application, which introduced a lot of uh, cool features for free. You had the ability to block ads. You had the ability to use sponsor blocks, so you could block certain segments of YouTube uh, videos with sponsors. You had the ability to listen to uh, videos in the background. Uh, there was options to uh, change certain flags in the YouTube application, which reverted certain features uh, that were introduced. You had the ability to return the YouTube dislike count. It was a very good, perfect uh, YouTube modification. And I currently actually use it uh, on my own uh, Pixel 6 that I have. It's good. Uh, but the problem is that YouTube Vance received a cease and desist letter uh, a couple days ago uh, requiring the YouTube Vance team to stop developing YouTube Vance. And quite frankly, I think it was inevitable that this was going to happen. I mean, with all of the features that it added, it was basically, for most people, YouTube Premium, but for free. It was inevitable. It was inevitable. Now, some people think that the reason why they got the cease and desist letter and that Google let it happen so long was because YouTube Vance never really made an attempt to like monetize off of YouTube Vance. Some people think are pointing to the NFT and uh, that they introduced. And quite frankly, I don't think that's that's necessarily true. I don't think it has anything to do with the NFT at all. Um, I think that as YouTube Vance was. Uh, just getting more of a f mainstream following from YouTubers showing off what it was to even um, news articles being written about it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It was inevitable that as YouTube Vance got bigger and bigger that this was just going to happen. Um, but getting out of the way what YouTube Vance is as an application and the controversy surrounding it itself, some people are suggesting YouTube Vance alternatives. Now, these alternatives that are being suggested aren't actually modifications of the YouTube application, but are in fact their own standalone YouTube clients. Um, we have uh, applications like NewPipe. Now, NewPipe is a free and open source YouTube application that lets you import your subscriptions. Uh, it lets you um, make your own playlists. It's, it's, I want to say that it's beautiful, but I don't think the vast majority of people are going to find it beautiful. Um, and for that very reason, I feel like you knew uh, that a new pipe or is not a good thing to suggest to a vast majority of people who were using YouTube Vanced in the first place. Because YouTube Vanced was a familiar application, YouTube, the YouTube application, uh, with a bunch of enhancements on top of it. Um, the way that you import your new pipe subscriptions, uh, your subscriptions into new pipe, I think, is that you have to like export a file from your YouTube account, and then you have to import that file into new pipe. And there's a, there's a lot of stuff that you also have the ability to just you know subscribe to YouTubers on its own end in general. Uh, you're not really you don't need a Google account to use new pipe, but that's the entire thing. Uh, people used YouTube Vance because they wanted to use their Google YouTube account on YouTube. Um, New Pipe is a good application, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not crapping on it at all. I am indifferent to its uh, user interface, but I definitely don't think that a good majority of people are going to want to use New Pipe coming from YouTube Vance because they liked that familiarity of YouTube. Um, there was another YouTube uh, open source application called uh, SkyTube, and it also offers a more proprietary version of it. It is uh, basically, you know, it's, it's SkyTube with a bunch of libraries that uh, have uh, certain enhancements for YouTube. Um, and once again, it's a good application problem. People want to use the YouTube application. They don't care if it's free or open source. All they care about is if it's familiar to them, the YouTube application, if they can sign into their Google account 
uh, and that that the ads are being blocked and they can play videos in the background which bingo i mean it has two of those features it has the ability to listen to videos in the background and block ads um but the fact is no one no one who uses Vance is going to care. <laughs> the people that use YouTube Vance want a YouTube application plus plus. And I'm I'm almost going to guarantee you that someone in the background is definitely working on a YouTube Vance alternative. It's probably not going to, you know, surface on on a GitHub. It's probably not going to surface on uh, any Reddit uh, subreddits. You know, I think that was YouTube Vance's uh, downfall. They had their own Twitter social media presences on Twitter. They had their own social media presence on Reddit. They had Telegram and Discord groups. They they were a big project, and they weren't being shy about it. Um. So, yeah. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. That is my uh, six minute ramble. Um. Tell me what you think. Do you think that we should be recommending Foss? Uh, open source alternative YouTube clients to those who use advanced or do you think that it might be a waste of time? Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and bye.